Well, I'd heard uh, that Chesley Bonestall was, uh, lived in Carmel. So uh, I got out the phone book and found his phone number and then called him and said, I'm down here, my wife and I, and, uh, you know, I'm, you know, I've been a fan of yours. Can I come by and see you? You know, and he said, OK. So <laughs> we drove over, over to his house and, and uh, went upstairs to his studio. And he was in his mid to late 80s at the time. You know, in, in his time of life where he was a little grumpier than, than I imagine he would have been, you know. I mean, he was very nice to, to show us his work and talk about his career. And then he recognized who I was. He says, you're the guy that paints all those bright space backgrounds. <laughs> and he says, you know, space is black, you know, it's not colorful like that. And then, you know, after that, you know, my, my backgrounds got calmer and calmer and more, a little more uh, dark space, but I still had that, that colorful touch to certain aspects of it. You have to be able to take, uh, uh, you know, comment, you know. Well, I started as an illustrator uh, in high school, actually. And it, uh, uh, one of my student teachers uh, who was uh, from San Jose State College was uh, student teaching at Willow Glen High School. And uh, he saw in one of our outings that I had a, a somewhat of a natural sense of uh, perspective when I was uh, doing field drawings. So he uh, brought in one day an architectural rendering. He says, what do you think, Rick? Do you think you could uh, do something like this? And uh, I had previously in the eighth grade did a perspective drawing of a building. So I went back, brought it in and the next day and showed it to him. And he says, well, this is great. I'm leaving an architectural firm where I'm the, the, doing the renderings. And would you be interested in trying out for it? And I said, sure. So I showed up there and they uh, gave me an assignment and, and I did a drawing and they hired me on the spot. I was 16 at the time and I was around uh, in the art studio was artists that were going to San Jose State and they were older and they were on the GI Bill. So they had served in the military, then they got out and they went into the art department. And so they all took the, me under their wing and, uh, and I learned from them, you know, about art and illustration and proceeded to uh, mix illustration work in with architectural renderings. And uh, that led me into doing uh, advertising editorial illustration for art directors around uh, Silicon Valley. Well, Silicon Valley was developing uh, the high-tech industry. Uh, I also joined the Western Art Directors Club where they had numerous uh, annual shows of work. And I entered in illustration work into that, those uh, graphic programs and shows. Uh, a lot of the art directors saw this work and thought that I would be a good candidate to do illustrations for them. So this kind of led into where the NASA uh, part came in is that they were seeking for illustrators. Many of the art directors in Silicon Valley had heard about this. Several of them uh, mentioned uh, Dick Cole, who was a top illustrator. And Dick Cole was contacted by them. And then he says, well, the guy I think could really do the job for you is Rick Guidus. And so they uh, contacted me. And then I went over and showed my portfolio. And uh, they gave me an assignment that day. While I'm working with NASA, uh, I started bringing into the, the products that I was uh, designing for them 
and putting together a, mo a montage type of illustration. Where before they might have had a, a spacecraft or, or a vehicle or, or, or one item floating in the center of a, of a picture. We started to develop uh, what we call theme art, where the mission would have uh, many elements to it. And I'd, I'd put those together in a, uh, a montage of elements where we had the planets and in this particular case, this uh, large spacecraft, Earth, Earth missions, moon missions, and asteroid mining, also aeronautics, future uh, uh, robotics, and artificial intelligence was all combined into a theme uh, for a montage painting. And this, this was a tissue for that. And uh, I like working on, on tissues because I would do uh, a, a, quite a few small drawings uh, on tissue, then, then move them around to where I like the composition of it, and, uh, and then do another uh, tracing of my original drawings into, into the final tissue, which would be presented to the art department and Ames uh, research for uh, approval. The inspiration comes from uh, established illustrators that I admire uh, through through the years, and things that I've seen in in national magazines and and car painters, and and back in the heyday of illustration, where where uh, all the advertising and the magazines and Saturday Evening Post were all full of beautiful illustrations, and they always inspired me to, to that was a, a future job, to, to aspire to do that type of work. I always studied and practiced to, to be able to paint uh, things like uh, automobiles and uh, architecture and people and create scenes and illustrations. So that, that, those were, were, were my goals uh, in, in my early years. And I developed my skills uh, aspiring to those goals. And then later on, <clears throat> when I got uh, more involved with uh, NASA, it, uh, uh, right away I started looking at uh, you know, the work that had been done by the top guys in that field before. And of course, Robert McCall was one of them. And beautiful, uh, beautiful work. And, and that, uh, that in inspired me that that was the standard you know, to, to achieve. You know, being an advertising illustrator, you know, I'm I'm always trying to create, uh, you know, interesting images and uh, making things uh, uh, exciting to a degree. And space, uh, often, as you see in a lot of uh, uh, photographs, is, is black and cold. You know, and a few little icy, cold specks in the distance. Where we look at Hubble uh, telescope pictures of nebula in the distance, in this beautiful colored, colored space backgrounds of nebula far away. I wanted to to mix that together. I started doing backgrounds uh, in uh, my some of my paintings that look like nebula. I did it uh, on some theme art that not necessarily needed to be uh, accurate. Uh, it, it was the flyby of a pioneer going by Jupiter, and then it got slingshot by the gravity rotation on out to Saturn. They wanted to show it, and they gave a little diagram, and they had a bunch of arrows going across the painting, where I thought, well, I can show this path of travel without without having arrows in the painting. And so I took the background and, and the whole color made a path in the space itself of the vehicle going around. And then I put a lot of, because I was taking such liberty with that background to, to uh, give a message, uh, I, I really made the background colorful and, and, and very much uh, playful in many ways. It was well received, and I and no and nobody said, "Well, your your background background's not like that." So I started adding that into uh, some of my more current uh, illustrations, especially into the uh, uh, 
uh, space uh, settlements uh, illustrations. So you'll you'll see that uh, that colored back background, and it was uh, you know to to make it look more inviting, you know, less hostile, and uh, and then the technique really uh, Nibia looks Nibia looks like it's a a, a gaseous element floating in the uh, in a in on a very bad black background, where uh, my technique in trying to produce this really uh, came out to be like windows of darkness where you you would go through the darkness and there's a brightness on the other side. And it kind of it gave an invitation that there was uh, something out there to explore, a place to go. I thought that was a, uh, uh, a nice element to that uh, message that that background was giving that, uh, you know, from the space settlements was a base for future uh, uh, exploration into, into the universe. You know, after the Pioneer uh, project, uh, we did another Venus mission. Uh, so the art department pretty much got used to seeing what I could produce and, and, and the scale of it. And then in 75, uh, NASA did a joint study at Stanford University with a lot of future thinkers about uh, future missions, space missions, through academia and also uh, what NASA would be involved in. And uh, NASA, during the summer study series, offered up uh, resources to investigate space colonization. Later, they call it space settlements. And Jared O'Neill from Princeton University had been studying this for four previous years and had come up with a, a pretty elaborate program about all the means and methods necessary to produce this the settlements in space. Everybody got excited about it and uh, the NASA offered up resources to support uh, this uh, focus. And uh, they uh, offered me as an illustrator. Uh, to to work on this project, the the kid illustrator and the and the top scientist, you know, uh, but he oh he was he was great. He previewed the project to me and uh, brought along a lot of uh, information and uh, development sketches that were done previously by O'Neill. So I had this work to look at uh, that was already done, and that, and the double cylinder was my first piece that I had done for him. I uh, went away with all this material and digested it and, and came up with some sketches, brought them in to the art director. Art director calls back in a week and says, yeah, that's great. You know, proceed to the next step. And then I did the, the full cartoon on it and they approved that. And then I uh, set about uh, painting it. And I knew this, this was an important piece of work. So the amount of money that uh, was budgeted and that I agreed to certainly didn't cover the the effort that I put into it. So I, I really made it a labor of love, that first piece. It, it still stands out as my favorite today. And I brought it back and everybody was excited about it. And, and uh, right away then we uh, went on to a series of support illustrations, developing materials to construct the space settlement from the moon and from the asteroids and uh, uh, other uh, support activities that would uh, go on to build these colonies, and such as uh, asteroid mining. And I did one where uh, the asteroid was captured in a large bag and mined and, and put into a uh, energy accelerator that would decay the orbit and it would slowly wrap around the sun and back to and match the colony and unload all the, the ore and resources to uh, construct the, the uh, uh, settlements, so that that was a, a fun a fun series, and it went on for uh, a, a year or two. Jared O'Neill had mentioned early on, and I don't believe it was through personal contact; it was through the art directors and stuff. Said that the the interior of the the double sphere he wanted to see to look like a French countryside, which I thought was pretty unusual, you know. But uh, he he was the the head guy, so that's what we did. And, and, and the density is uh, like a French countryside. I had this cocktail party going on right up in the foreground as you looked over. And I think in my own mind, what I wanted to do was to, to, to make it look uh, as though it wasn't alien. 
and uh, that the environment was familiar to the, the people viewing it at the time. So I, uh, I introduced, uh, you know, a very uh, recognizable type of dr dress on people and the comfort of being in your own backyard in this particular uh, type of environment. I chose kind of to take this direction and it was received uh, to, to proceed, you know, with that, without much uh, discussion about uh, trying to make people look, uh, you know, like they're from, from the future, you know. I had never heard anybody say, gosh, that should be denser, you know, or it really wouldn't look like that. But it, uh, it was uh, all well received by everybody who uh, looked at it. We did three different versions, and each version got uh, a little denser in its uh, uh, population density as far as the structures within the spheres. And uh, that, that went over several year period, you know, where we went from the, the each type of, of settlement. And this would be more of a typical illustration where uh, the, I'm looking at it in a perspective angle, centered in the center, and only a little small parts running off the, the, the vision, where I would feel comfortable moving ahead right from the, you know, doing a, a simple sketch and go right and, and produce a finish because there's Everything is being depicted very clearly in this particular scene. Where some of the other uh, illustrations that I had done uh, uh, in this line, uh, I, I, I challenged the layout a little more by having a lot of the imagery uh, go off of the uh, off of the uh, the page, and so I, I did more uh, of the color the uh, color comps beforehand to make sure everybody was comfortable with the way I edited the the scene, drawing the object uh, out carefully uh, in line and, uh, and then sending this uh, tissue for approval for my first round with uh, NASA before I painted it. And sometimes I use a technique where I would actually uh, print this tissue uh, onto more of a bond paper and mount it to a board and then and then start painting right on uh, this uh, the, the tissue diagram because the layout is so accurate. Saves the time of uh, transferring the uh, image to a board. And this is a, uh, a progress tissue of uh, the Hubble spacecraft where uh, I was uh, drawing it up. You can see a lot of construction lines in there and layouts and centers and, and, and getting the, the vehicle uh, drawn in perspective uh, uh, very carefully in this, this first round tissue thing. Then I'd, I would take that drawing and, uh, and trace over the top of it very carefully. And then here, and then it, here it is uh, later on docked in a, uh, this one was a standalone, but this is very similar to the process. Here is the space shuttle, uh, or the, the Hubble spacecraft being serviced at the space station in a special bay designed for uh, servicing the Hubble. And they were proposing this. I kind of made up, made up a lot of this equipment that's, that's all, all around there doing, doing the function. And then I had to do people floating in, in space. So I, I saw some pictures of kids swimming underwater. And I thought, well, gosh, that, that has a, the weightlessness feel. So this is one of my preliminary sketches of uh, people floating around. And then I did, later developed those into uh, people f uh, floating in, in space.
what occurred to me when the uh, museum show started was that as seeing all that artwork at one time was that it its importance in the future and how it's transcended from illustration to paintings. And before the illustration was just one part of a larger mission at the time to be into print and to be on TV and the originals were just set aside and not no longer uh, particularly needed. Well, seeing, the, uh, seeing this as being a combination, each painting was a combination of a, of a large study and lots of paperwork and support. And people going in and seeing the illustration just brought alive to them what people were thinking in, in the past uh, and working on it in the past. And it uh, uh, brought a whole new generation of uh, curious uh, minds uh, to investigate the, the missions and to uh, uh, see, see the artwork in particular. The period of time, uh, the, the, the whole social uh, climate of opportunity in the new frontier was all in our, our minds and our spirits. And, and uh, uh, the potential of the future always it seemed in uh, everyone's mind that everything was going to get better. Anything is technically possible uh, that humans can do because we've just gone to the moon and, and there was a real effort with our government to do space missions uh, on a big scale. One of the things that uh, O'Neill's study uh, showed that, that technologically this could be done, that it was just a matter of financing and the will to do so. Technologically, I believed that man could do it. What I found interesting is that O'Neill said, if this didn't happen in the first 20 years, it, it wouldn't happen at all because government would be the main funding body and their focus would change from funding large space mi missions to uh, taking care of human uh, and social problems on Earth. Uh, such that uh, you know larger populations would uh, demand more government uh, participation, and the funds would go there. And then I I believed him that that pretty much uh, would would be the case. But what I find now is that private industry is stepping up, and uh, whenever we talk about whenever I talk about O'Neill's uh, 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 time limit that it wouldn't happen. All of a sudden, I, I see a whole future in, in uh, the private industry stepping in where government can't. And that's an exciting uh, aspect, and the future looks good because of that. Thank you.